he thought, oh, I'll give him some advices to this Avshalom. I'll advise him to kill his own father. And then once he kills his father, I'll make a bedding. And the court will say, oh, you are to be blamed that you killed your own father. They will execute him because I am the highest uh, advisor, the highest minister. I'll become the king. He saw in the stars that he saw some kind of king, of kingdom, kingship uh, in, in the stars. It's true that his grand grandchild was Shlomo Amelech, and uh, yeah, Bacheva was his uh, granddaughter. So he thought, by, but he thought that he's going to be the king, and because of this. He made so much mistakes. Okay? He went against David Amelech. This is Achitov. Um, let's give a good example. It speaks about Nebuzaradan. Who was Nebuzaradan? Nebuzaradan was Nebuchadnezzar's uh, commander in chief, the biggest general of Nebuchadnezzar. He was a wicked person by himself. Okay? The commander-in-chief, he is the one that's in charge of killing, right? So you can understand what type of person was Nebuchadnezzar. Killed millions of people. He didn't care. He didn't bother him at all. So he is sent to Israel, okay, to, uh, by Nebuchadnezzar to uh, take care of the Jews. He comes to a certain place in the Holy Temple, and you know this story, and over there he sees a blood that boils, boils, mm -hmm. a blood of a dead person that boils, doesn't come down. And so he asks the people, what's that? They don't want to tell him. He threatens, he's going to kill a lot of other people on this blood so that this blood will come down. And then they admit, we had once a prophet, Zechariah Hanavi, and we killed him because he rebuked us. We didn't listen to him. He, we killed him. It was on Yom Kippur, a day of atonement, and we did such a, such a bad thing. And this is his blood that doesn't come down since then. The Huzadan was very interested. What does it mean it doesn't come down, his blood? He takes little kids. Little kids never made a scene. They're innocent. Hopefully, the blood of little kids will come down this, this blood. He kills a lot of little children. On top of this blood, it doesn't come down. Righteous people, righteous people, they, they don't go through all kind of agendas, right? They don't have uh, bad motivation. And so maybe with, uh, with that, it will come down. He kills a lot of rabbis, a lot of Jews, a lot of good people, it doesn't come down. He kills and kills and kills and kills hundreds and thousands and thousands and thousands of times on top of this blood, and it doesn't. He comes to this blood and tells him, hey, I'm going to kill everybody. I don't care. This is when he comes down. He was very interested. What's happening here? I want to ask you a question. If somebody is a commander-in-chief and he is in charge of killings, he kills and kills, and he continues on. Who cares? Nebuzaradan was looking for the truth. He wanted to know what exactly happened. He started thinking, wait a second. If the Jews killed one person, and his blood is not come down, means there's damage done, and somebody needs to fix it, okay? If one was killed, and such damage was done, I killed so many, millions of people I killed. What's going to be the end of me? I'm going to, where exactly in hell they'll give me a place over there? He started thinking, and he, they say that he took off his uh, uniform of the commander-in-chief. He put on himself a clothing of uh, a prisoner Jew, uh, free, Okay, um, these uh, uh, people that uh, the, the other Jews that uh, he was chasing after, and he ran away. He ran away, was searching for the truth. They said that he converted and became Jew, and the great his great great children are learning Torah in Bnei mm -hmm. wow. 
So this is a somebody that was looking for truth. He didn't leave it there. He saw something. He did something about that. What motivated him? The truth. He wanted to know the truth. Listen, girls, when we make tshuva, we want to make halal tshuva. <coughs> so what is the big sacrifice that you do? He left his armor, his fame, his job, okay? Maybe the Nebuchadnezzar will find him and execute him. Maybe he leaves everything behind and goes to look for the truth. So you decide you take upon yourself tznimut. Or you decide you're a big deal. It's not such a big sacrifice that, that you do as opposed to, to these guys, right? But we're speaking about motivation. That's something that uh, motivates people. I want to go back and explain a little bit about Paro. What did Paro want to do? Paro wanted to separate the Jews from Hashem. Paro wanted to separate the name of Hashem. Something interesting. It says, um, it says after uh, one of the Makot, it says, um, yeah. So it says, um, Hashem Atzadik, Vani Vami Arashaim. Oh, we, we, when you read it in Hebrew, uh, Hebrew letters, it says Hashem, full name of Hashem, Yud K Vav K, Hashem, Hatzadik, Yud K, uh, name of Hashem starts with Yud, Hatzadik, next letter starts with Hey. You have Vani, Vami, Harashaim. So the initial letters of Vami is Vav, Harashaim is he, Vav Hey. So Yud K, Vav Hey, you have right. Name of Hashem? In the middle, Vani. Mm -hmm. Paro puts himself in the middle. He doesn't, name, doesn't want the name of Hashem to be complete. Name of Hashem to be complete means he wants us to stay in the exile of Egypt. In the, oh, this is the exile of the Dat. Dat means the knowledge of Hashem. He makes separation between the knowledge of Hashem and the doing, and the mitzvot, and the doing things. Hashem keeps telling us all the time in this parashot, V'idatem ki ani Hashem elokechem. I want you to know, what's it that? That is the connection, is the chibur, okay? Between us and Hashem. And Paro tries to separate it all the time. V'ani also, otiot, the letters of oni. Oni means my power. Kochi ve'otzem yadi, right? Oni is my power, my strength. Me, ani, ani. Paro represents selfishness. He thinks just about himself. He doesn't care even not, it's not only the sadist that, that is cruel to the Jews, he also cruel to his own people. But oh, when a plague bothered him personally, he would come to Moshe and scream, Moshe, Moshe, please take it away, I can't, I can't, I can't. But if it didn't bother him personally, but just the nation, he didn't care. Okay, so let them first suffer, who cares? This was part of. Paro cared only about himself. Paro was selfish. What motivated Paro was arrogance. Who am I should, that I should listen to Hashem? I don't care about him. And um, and um, also Paro otiot orif. Orif is the neck. And um, and the Haria Kadosh say that um, Paro milshon gilui. If you remember, I think it was in Parashat Naso, it speaks about uh, a woman that her husband suspects her, she goes to the Kohen, and it says, Ufara et rosh ha'isha. Para means re he reveals her, he takes away her head covering, okay, reveals her hair. Then he called Gilui. And so, um, Paro, he controls over Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim in Hebrew means it's a narrow place, tsar, tsarut. What he cares, what he, he represents is tsarut ayin. Doesn't look, he's envy at other people. He's not happy when other people are happy. He's just happy about himself, not about other people. And the uh, punishment of Paro was because he wanted to confuse the Jews and to rebel against Hashem, okay? When 
whoever really feared from the from the plague were the Jews, not not the Egyptians. The Egyptians they were afraid of all these magic things that, that they saw, but they, they it didn't they didn't it didn't make them fear Hashem. It made the Jews fear Hashem. And uh, and uh, made the Jews understand that they need Hashem, that they depend on Hashem. This is something that Paro always wanted to prevent, and he couldn't. Some say that Paro didn't drown in the sea. Some say that he stayed alive, and so later on, how his nation makes tshuva because Hashem wanted him to. His nation was Nineveh. Hashem wanted him to. See how does it feel when people make tshuva, and uh, that was his punishment. So we're speaking about what motivates people. I want to uh, finish in, uh, with a new kind of uh, twist, uh, but uh, same kind of an idea. There was this uh, lady lived in China, and she got married with her husband. In China, in China, it's uh, very. Uh, that's what usually people do over there. They live with their in-laws, like, like uh, I guess uh, also in Nepal, Samarkand, and all these places. Very old-fashioned, and um, she accepted that. She didn't have a problem. Everybody's doing it. It's okay. It's fine. So she lives with them. So in the beginning, it's fine. It's nice, this and that. But slowly, slowly, she realizes that her mother-in-law is on top of her, too much. She keeps asking, where did you go? When did you come back? When did you get up? What did you cook? How did you say? It's not right what you say to your husband. You have to do it differently. Your food is not so there. All kind of remarks and she doesn't like it. And slowly, slowly, it gets into her mind that she hates her mother. So then she made the decision. Her mother-in-law is too much on top of her. She goes to an uncle that she had. He was a scientist. She comes and tells him, I want to ask you a favor. I want to get rid of my mother-in-law. Can you please prepare me some kind of a poison that I'll kill her? He's like, are you crazy? What do you want to do? I can't stand her anymore. She bothers me. She, 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 she. And so he's like, are you sure? Are you? He keeps asking her, are you sure? She says, yeah, yeah, I know. She's, she's, she's a witch. She's terrible. She, she. <laughs> and so he told her, okay, 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 I'll do something. But you don't want her to understand that you killed her, right? So you have to do it very smart. You have to do it very gradually. Every other day, put some drops of this poison that I'll give you in her food. Every other day. But that has to come with the condition. You have to serve the food nicely to her. So she won't understand that it's you that's killing her. <laughs> you have to say her a good word. You have to compliment her. You have to try to find what, how to benefit her, how to make her feel good about you. Once you're going to do this, she won't pay attention, she won't realize, she won't know, and this is when mission will be completed. You have to take it some time. She said, fine. She takes this poison, and she does whatever he tells him to do. Every other day, she puts some drops in her food, and she tries to be nice to her. So she compliments her on her clothes that she bought, and she compliments her on the cookies that she prepared, and and um, she takes her to shopping with her and she, she, she tries to be nice to her. And then one day she hears her mother-in-law talks to one of her friends and she tells her, you know, in the beginning my daughter-in-law was so terrible, was so like a baby and, 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 and annoyed at everything. And I, now she's okay, now she's better. She, she's my friend. She takes me to places. I like her food, she cooks very nice, she's taking care of her husband very good. She hears that, she feels good. And then the next day, they chat together and they laugh and they have a good time together. And then they share some recipes and then da da da, da. Some time passed and she realized 
but she made a mistake. She doesn't want her mother-in-law to die, God forbid. She became a friend. And what she should do? She is every day she's killing her. She goes back to her aunt, to her uncle, the scientist, and she tells him, listen, I I made a mistake. I, I, I don't want to kill her. She's my friend. He tells her, are you sure? She says, yes, I was so young. I, I didn't look at things the right way. I, I, I thought that she wants to overcome, she wants to control over me. I, I thought that she wants to all the time find my disadvantages. I thought that, like, but she's not, she's kind, she's good. And yeah, I became a friend and what should I do now? He tells her, well, I tell you the truth. I saw that uh, you are angry and you are upset and you were just newly, ma newly uh, married and probably it's a whole big mistake. So instead of poison, I just gave you some vitamins. <laughs> vitamins. <laughs> Nothing wrong, everything is okay. But you know something? You learned that once you give, once you uh, compliment, once you share, you become a friend. And you change your view, you change your outlook. That's only for your own benefit. Yes, so this is what we learn. We learn that it's all in our minds. And once we change the way that we think about our husbands, about our mother-in-law, about our own mothers, about brothers, about neighbors, about friends, once we start thinking positive about things, okay, we're happier. That's what Hashem wants from us. Thank you. Thank you. Any question?